John Calipari posted a video yesterday in which he said this. It's been a beautiful time for us. This is a dream job. It was my dream job. Anybody in our profession looks at the University of Kentucky in basketball and said, that is the bluest of blue. The last few weeks, we've come to realize that this program probably needs to hear another voice, that the university as a whole has to have another voice giving guidance about this program that they hear. And the fans need to hear another voice. We've loved it here, but we think it's time for us to step away and step away completely from the program. Hmm. So, Keyshawn, your reaction to Coach Cal saying Kentucky needs another voice. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. He spent 15 years there. Okay, he went to some tournaments, got a lot of draft picks, uh, won a national championship, recruited well. Time has run out. It happens all the time in professional and collegiate sports. When, when you look at guys that have been somewhere for such a long time, things, the message gets stale. Okay? And... and it's better to leave early than too late in his situation. What if he, let's say they get knocked out of the first round next year, they go probably firing. So why not take a better financial situation in a program that's looking for you to come in and boost it up in Arkansas? His, the, the money, okay, you say, well, they owed him whatever it was number, I think it was like $33 30, million yeah. or $30 mm -hmm. million, dollars, whatever. He gonna make that and then some at Arkansas. Because his deal is structured as such that it makes sense for him to leave. And essentially, I'm no matter where I go as a coach, I can recruit the same caliber of player that I did at Memphis, Kentucky, UMass, and anywhere else I've ever been, I can get that same player to go to Arkansas because that's what I do. Now can you turn those players in to winning championships or Sweet 16 and Elite 8 Final Four appearances. That's going to be the task for him. Not if he should have left Kentucky. They were going to fire him after next year. You know how it goes, Rachel and Skip. When they have a meeting with you the year before you get fired, Rachel. they have a meeting with you to let you know, hey, man, we can't do this again after this year. We're going to give you one last shot to figure it out. Because they didn't meet with him three years ago. They met with him this year a couple of weeks ago. To tell him, you, you, we, you know, we're going to look to do something different if you don't take care of business. So, of course, I, I like the message. He did what he could. Now let's see what he do in Arkansas. Mm. Yeah, I mean, look, I think sometimes when we look at these situations, we look at that sort of platonic ideal. Why would you leave a program like Kentucky for a program like Arkansas? Guess what? You're not having the being the head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats the way you did five years ago, right? The relationship with the athletic department is obviously super strained. The crossroads you're at with what kind of players to recruit is different. And the relationship with the fan base is so different. And this isn't something to overlook now that the NIL is here and how much fundraising you can do and how much money is coming in makes a difference in the kind of success you have. He can't be John Calipari, coach of Kentucky, that he was five years ago. He is instead embattled coach. Calipari. And when you talk about the money specifically, they had a fundraiser just recently where the group was hoping to get about a million dollars to put into the <laughs> to put into the NIL coffers. They raised fifty thousand. See? Right? So if you are a coach looking to compete in today's college basketball market, and that is what the fan base is giving you, that is the confidence they are showing in you. Nothing, the though. writing is on <laughs> the wall to go to a program like Arkansas where you've got Tyson chicken money, right? You got Walmart money. You got Jerry Jones, your guy's money coming in, who are all super excited about you being there, who are lining up to donate to the NIL fund. So I, I just think we're not talking about, man, he should have stayed at Kentucky because the image of Cal at Kentucky, that wasn't available to him anymore. And you could see it on his face. He's disappointed. That wasn't a happy, cheery, I'm so excited for the next phase sort of video that was he looked he looked worn he he, he looked a little bit like he was di disappointed to leave and I'm sure he is but what he treasured at Kentucky it, it just wasn't there anymore 
So you have to compare that to the job at Arkansas, mm. not the, oh, Coach Cal at Kentucky mystique that we've been thinking of for so yeah. many years. All right. We all love Coach Cal. Mm -hmm. Love being around Coach Cal. I cannot defend what he has not done at Kentucky over the last nine years. It's a long time, nine years. Kentucky didn't need a new voice. It needed a new coach who can coach. And I'm sorry, he has not been coaching the talent that was at his fingertips that he recruited routinely. He routinely did less with more than any coach in the country over the last nine years because they did not even reach one Final Four in nine years. Over the last four years, they managed to win one NCAA game in four tries, and you lost to a 15 seed and then a 14 seed this year. In the SEC tournament, which is a big deal to Big Blue Nation, they won one game in the last four years. So everybody packs up and drives down to Nashville for the big SEC tournament weekend, and you, you're going home quickly because you, you don't make it out of the first round. It's, it's just wrong that they haven't won a national championship since 2012 and Anthony Davis because they've routinely had the best talent in the country. They've had 35 first round draft picks and this year they're going to have two picks I think in the top 10. So we had Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard on that team and I'm watching the game against Oakland out of Detroit, not that Oakland, the Detroit <laughs> Oakland and I'm watching it and I'm saying I can't even see these kids play. Maybe they're being overrated but I'm pretty sure they're going to go in the top 10, both of them. And so you say, wait, we just watched Dan Hurley take a team in which they had to plug in three new starters, and he can really coach. You can just see it. They, they run offense. We say, that, that looks good. They run suffocating full-court defense. You say, that's well-coached. Cal's teams, I didn't ever say that looked well-coached. It always looked like they were underachieving to me. And, and so, that may be true. You know, and that may yeah. be true because when you look at Hurley's teams, and you look at Cal's teams over them years, he doesn't have the same caliber of player. So as a head coach in Cal, and you say, well, that, that's wrong. He shouldn't do that. He's probably sitting back just figuring, one and done. I'm on autopilot with I, these guys. They should be able to do it. Well, Hurley's got to really coach. He's well, that's got the thing, to coach. Though. Don't you think that this change of venue is going to be a wake-up call for him, absolutely, too? Absolutely, 100%. I have to think that, John, going through this experience I agree. and being demoralized a little bit, yes. the way we saw him in that video, is going to make him rethink some of that. It's a fresh start for him, too. It's new voices for hey, him, too. Th this is huge for Arkansas. It's right? really good for Arkansas. Now, if you tell me, Skip, yeah. five years from now, that we having the same conversation... Yeah. That's you got to be now. At that point, he should retire. Can I do some math for you guys? Yeah. Okay. So the details about his new contract at Arkansas just came out. They said five-year deal starts at seven million and one million dollar signing bonus. It's five years, but it includes two rollover years. So as long as he makes the NCAA tournament, which we expect him to make. The